Hello kitties, it's Steve, the OG Guitar Nut. Welcome to Guitar Nuts Anonymous. As promised in our last episode, I've uh, purchased one of these Vox Mark III teardrop mini guitars. Um, okay. Here it is in the box. I'm going to do an unboxing and a mini review. Uh, I won't be doing a full review including sound um, <clears throat> samples and all that sort of thing. Now, for reasons that I'll explain as we go, uh, that'll come at a later time. But for now, let's, uh, let's not talk anymore. Let's get this thing open, shall we? So, uh, ordered these directly from Korg via Reverb.com. They're normally $2.79. Come with a gig bag. And at the moment, because uh, a glut of them have become available, Korg is offering them through Reverb for $129 each. $129, including shipping. So uh, I ordered a pair of them. And, uh, well, here's one. So for a start here, the main box is open. We've got some... Very popular bubble wrap and another box inside of the semi triangular variety. What is that, a trapezoid? Um, yeah, let's get this out of the way. Uh, here we go. Box guitars, Mark III Mini, um, which is also shut. shot. Okay, fair enough. Open that as well. Uh, it took Three days, I believe, from ordering to arrival. It's faster than I expected. Pretty cool. Let's see here. Here's the interior. We've got a owner's manual. Appears to be in five different languages. Um, English, French. Hmm. Uh, Perhaps German, um, Spanish, and uh, <clears throat> forgive me for not knowing the difference between Japanese and Chinese. I would guess Chinese because this came from China, but then again, Japan is a huge market for guitars. So, well, regardless, little manual. Let's see, here's the included gig bag. No padding at all. Um, so it's very much just a carry bag, a dust cover, as it were. Uh, it does have a pouch in the front, a zippered pouch, which was actually unzipped. Okay, nothing in it. Um, it's cute. Looks like it would house a tennis racket, which, interestingly enough, is kind of what the guitar looks like. It's got the box logo on it, so uh, it certainly beats not getting any kind of a bag for free, because this certainly isn't a standard size instrument that you'd. Uh, be able to go out and just find a case for. It's bigger than a mandolin. Probably about the size of a mandola though, so it's I'm sure there's something out there. Let's see. The uh, truss rod adjustment wrench and a uh, bridge saddle adjustment Allen screw, a uh, key screw. Uh, let's see here. This is the uh, psychedelic marble finish. It's a uh, well, that's a nice touch. They put a little piece of styrofoam on there to uh, protect the pickup switch, which doesn't feel flimsy, which is nice. Let's see, this tissue type paper to protect the fingerboard from the strings. Also a nice touch. Let's see, there's some clear plastic over both the pit guard and the pickups, but I'll leave that on for now. As you can see, it's a really cool marbled psychedelic finish. Vox logoed headstock. Now, if I'm honest, I would have been most thrilled if this was offered in this color, just straight white, because especially with this layout, two pickups, volume and tone, three position switch, this very much echoes the original Brian Jones Rolling Stones guitar in white. Um, I don't know why they didn't offer it in white, because... Uh, 
Well, unless they intend to make a limited edition version later or something, who knows? But uh, I'd have definitely ordered a white one. But as is, I got this because it was pretty psychedelic looking and cool. They also have a uh, kind of a surf green and a bright red. I didn't get much care for the bright red, but uh, you might. So that's what it looks like here. Um, out of the box, action's nice and low. To give you some idea of scale of size here, uh, there it is next to me. Here it is, next to my number one guitar. Uh, yeah, definitely small. Uh, this is an 18 and 3 quarter inch scale. Comes equipped with uh, 12 to 54 strings. Um, heavier gauge strings are supposed to give you very much the same feel as a standard size guitar if you have 10s on or something of that nature, you know, your usual 10 to 46 or whatever. And uh, yeah, and it's uh, supposed to give you that kind of a feel. And it does feel, you know, pretty fresh or slightly scratchy. No sharp fret ends though, which is nice. Uh, yeah, it, uh, it feels pretty good from here. Overall, just from looking at it, I'd say the, the QC seems pretty high. I don't see any obvious finish imperfections or any kind of other things of that nature. So, as I mentioned earlier, I actually ordered two of these. And um, this one you just got to watch me unbox, obviously. But I actually unboxed the other one a few days ago. And I've been playing with it. Here it is. In the lovely surf green finish. Actually quite striking in person. It's a really a nice color. Um, yeah. Still would have really liked it if they'd offered plain white. But uh, if they're going to offer a color, this is about as cool as it gets in my opinion. So, uh, again, the QC seemed high. Everything felt good. Oh, someone wants to speak to me. Uh, everything felt good. The, the overall quality, the, you know, no sharp fret ends. Um, in actuality, the frets on this one actually felt a little better, a little less scratchy than on that one. I haven't spent any time with that yet. Um, and, of course, I'm going to do my usual tear down, take the strings off, condition the fretboard, polish everything. Um, Polish the tops of the frets a bit with fret erasers, the, uh, the highest grit, um, which means the smallest grit, of course. Um, just to, to polish and give them a bit of a shine and take off any grit that might be there. But here's the deal. Um, I was slightly disappointed in the fact that right out of the box, I don't mean to say it's unplayable. It's very playable in terms of the action, in terms of, you know the feel, whatever. But I found that it was impossible to get it to play in tune to itself. Now, the first thing I did when I took it out of the box, got everything cleaned up, I set it down, got out my tools, adjusted the intonation. As you can see, that's, that's an intonated bridge. Got the 12th fret perfectly in tune to the open notes. And still, If I get the D chord in tune, the C sounds awful, G sounds even worse, E's not too bad. <clears throat> so, started thinking, okay, what could be going on because the intonation is perfectly set. Well, the bottom line is, is the nuts are way too high. And what's happening is, in order to get sufficient down pressure to make your chords, you're bending individual strings out of tune, some more than others. Uh, and to verify this, I busted out a capo, capoed at the first fret, meticulously tuned it by ear, problem was gone. So what I need to do is, uh, when I do take this, you know, break this down, take the strings off and everything, I need to knock that nut out, get out some uh, coarse sandpaper, and start filing. Um, the bottom of the, the nut till it's low. It's going to have to be trial and error. I'll have to do a bit at a time and put it back on. I don't want to go too far. You can always take more off, but you can't add more on. Or otherwise, you're a moron. 
But I got to thinking, when you've got a capo on at the first fret, for instance, there's practically no space between the bottom of the string and the next fret. It's so close. Yet, you know, it's, it's playable, it doesn't buzz or anything. So then I take a look at how high the string is off the first fret without the capo, and uh, there, yeah, there's the culprit. The, the nut is just way too high. It's too tall. So um, I was disappointed insofar as I couldn't just take it out of the box and be able to say, oh yeah, this is, this is the bomb, this is great. Um, I'm gonna have to go in and file down these nuts and uh, see how it goes from there. Once I've done that, I'll do a follow-up with a real review where I'll plug it in, let you hear the sounds. Uh, I have high hopes still. You know, I, I really, I love these things. This is one of my favorite body shapes. I've always wanted a Mark VI, which is the grown-up version of this, specifically the Brian Jones version, the two pickup, because most came with three pickups and a different switching configuration. I wanted, you know, basically this, but bigger and in white. Uh, so again, very high hopes. Um, everything on it seems to be in order. Bridge is good quality. It's got these cool knobs. Pickups seem good. Uh, I have had it plugged in and they sound fine. Um, didn't experiment with them too much, but certainly have good output and everything. Um, the tuners are generic, but seem high quality. Uh, they won't win any awards or anything, but they seem to more than do their job. Neck doesn't have a neck plate. It actually is, is recessed, uh, um, what did you say, receivers there. So uh, it, it's, everything about it tells me this has the potential to be a great addition to your arsenal, especially if you need a travel guitar. Uh, another thing that I uh, thought of, I've been playing a lot of baritone lately. Uh, I have a pair of Squire Bay Sixes, one that I keep in standard EE tuning. Uh, and you've seen it, it's going to be the one with the uh, Gizmatron mounted to it soon. The other, I have lighter gauge strings on. I have it tuned baritone A to A. And I've been playing that just almost constantly lately because honestly, every time I pick it up, new song ideas fall out of it. I don't know what, what it is, but somehow it just speaks to me. So uh, I'm going with it. I won't question it. I'll just do it. The point being, it occurred to me that if I strung this with a standard set of, let's say, eight or nine gauge strings, I could actually tune this up to an A, A to A, um, and then have an interesting octave up complement to the baritone, which is something I tend to do, especially since I have a pair of them. I can have one in standard, one with lighter strings tuned up to an A, uh, which, you know, that could be a really interesting option. So that's, uh, that's the deal. So meanwhile, uh, I won't take any more of your time. I just noticed there are only a very small number of reviews on this particular bad boy. There's a lot of echo in the room today. Don't usually go from this angle. Um, but yeah, uh, a bit of a disappointment, but we haven't given up hope. We're just going to have to uh, do what needs to be done. And then uh, I'll, I'll give you a full review and demo, and uh, you can hear it. And... Uh, Meanwhile, if you don't want to wait and you're not scared or intimidated by nut work needing to be done, these are still available on Reverb from Korg, $129, shipping included in the United States. Um, apparently the deal isn't available anywhere else, unfortunately, but uh, for those of you here in the States, you know, I'm still going to recommend it. You know, the fact you can't take it out of the box and it be ready to play, um, yeah, it's a drag, but... It's going to be fine as soon as this nut gets taken care of. I can just tell the quality's here. It's, it's going to be a great and fun instrument and very useful to me. So, you heard it from me first. It's worth it. You know, what the heck. Take a gamble. Um, it's actually not much of a risk in this case. It's you know, What do you get for $129 these days? Not a heck of a lot, right? So anyway, until you hear from me next, stay cool, stay frosty, stay musical. Stay friendly, and uh, above all, rock out and chime on. Till you talk to me next, this is Steve, the Guitar Nut, saying goodbye.